Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology. In this video I'm going through the math skill logarithms or log scales. If you are new here then click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. So first of all why we use log scales in biology. You use a log scale to help you compare values that have a huge range. So for example, we can see here, this particular set of data, we go from very small values to very large values. And if you needed to plot that on a graph, it'd be really difficult to pick a scale that would give you increments on the scale so you could actually see a clear pattern. So what we do is convert to log. And what that means is you now present your original value in the order of magnitude format instead. And in biology, we use what's called log 10. And what that means is when you convert your original value to log 10, that is telling you how many times 10 has been multiplied by itself to give you that value. And I'm just gonna show you over here how you would do this on your calculator. So for the first row, what you would do to work out the log of 0.003, you press the log button, enter your original, which in this case was 0.003 equals, and then we get our log. So minus 2.52. So I rounded it to three decimal places. I've then done that for the rest of them to create our log values. Now, one thing just to note, particularly if you are doing a required practical and need to present your data in this format, there aren't any units for logarithmic values. So what you should do instead is you write log and then in brackets what the original type of data was. So in this case it was time and what the units were for that. So log brackets time in seconds. Now looking at graphs, the most common experiment that comes up on the A-level papers linked to logs is anything involving measuring the growth of microorganisms. And the reason for that is when you do grow bacteria, you can get huge ranges in the number because they replicate so quickly. So the example we have here is how many bacteria grew at different concentrations of antibiotic. And if we were to plot this data, this is the graph we would get. We have the antibiotic concentration against the number of bacteria. And because there is such a huge range, we have increments on the graph that are really large as well. And the issue with that, having such large increments on the scale, is when you get some of the smaller values, which actually aren't even that small, they're just comparatively small, it looks like they're at zero when they are not. It's just the scale has such huge increments, that's how it appears. So that is the issue that log overcomes. So if we convert that number of bacteria column into log, and then instead have our y-axis as log of the number of bacteria, now we can get a scale that is far more appropriate and it means that when we plot our data it's really easy to accurately read off the graph different data points so that's why we use log exam questions you could have linked to this first of all they could ask you and they have asked this quite a few times why would you use log and the answer is if you have a huge range of data, you need to convert to log so you can then read those data points off a graph accurately. So they could give you a graph like this and ask you to work out what the original value was. So here's an example. What number of bacteria grew at 25% antibiotic concentration? So step one, you would need to read off at 25% go up to the trend line and see what log value we have. So what the log of the number of bacteria is, and that is 7.55. Then we need to convert that back into the original. And if you remember, we said that log 10 is how many times 10 has been multiplied by itself to give that value. So to convert back to the original, we do 10 to the power of your log. So in this case, 10 to the power of 7.55. And 
and that comes to this huge number here. Okay, so here's another example. This time we're told that a patient was infected with 46,000 bacteria and they want you to say what concentration of antibiotic they must have been taking. So this time we've been given the original value for the number of bacteria. So we can't read off straight from the graph to work out the antibiotic concentration. The first step is we need to convert that into log so we can then read off the graph. So we'd enter log onto your calculator and then enter 46,000. That then gives us a log value of 4.66. Now we have the log number, we can go to the axes and draw a line at 4.66, go into the trend line and then down to see which antibiotic concentration they must have been on. And that would be 88%. So that is it for log scales. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up.